welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here at KKM for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting this evening's show. On the uh, advisory map here, there are still wind advisories out for the eastern Alaska range through the passes there, and probably west of, mostly west of the Toke Cutoff. That's for uh, winds gusting to uh, 45 miles per hour until about midnight tonight. And then the wind advisory here uh, for the northern Kuskokwim Valley, but that's in toward the passes of the Alaska Range. Uh, that advisory out until 3 a.m. and that's for winds gusting to about 50 miles an hour. And then a winter weather advisory still going for the uh, coast here of the Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait Coast down across St. Lawrence Island. And that's uh, out until 3 a.m. tonight uh, for northeast winds gusting as high as 55 miles per hour, especially through the Bering Strait. And of course, that'll create some uh, low visibilities in snow and blowing snow. Moving on to the satellite imagery yesterday, we were watching a pretty strong front coming up into the Gulf of Alaska and pushing in toward the southeast coast with uh, good gale and storm force winds across the area there right into Kodiak Island. Good break up here over the interior and uh, watching that move inland, of course that spread the rain into the panhandle overnight last night and some of that moisture got a little farther north and then today we'll see the front has moved inland and really becoming uh, diffuse and broken up here over the interior areas, kind of angling back down, something like that and then another trough right through here enhance the shower activity here along the panhandle today back up toward about Yakutat and an upper disturbance here pulling up to the northeast there and the whole trough pulling back to the west and we've got pretty good gradient here across south central Alaska for some uh, pretty gusty winds but uh, showers become or the precipitation becoming more showery and tapering off now across the uh, Kenai Peninsula back down toward Kodiak Island and then you can see clouds gathering here associated with the next system that's going to uh, come on up tonight and then bring good gale force winds and more rain and snow here for the Alaska Peninsula and across Kodiak Island during the day tomorrow. And on the chart uh, today, here's the front uh, again, really washing out and dissolving up over the interior. It did manage to pull a few flurries north of the mountains across the uh, Tanana Valley and a little farther to the north there, but pretty good across the upper Yukon Valley and the Brooks Range areas. And then uh, maybe a few flurries and some variable clouds there across the Yukon Delta. A little more in the way of uh, precipitation, at least showing up on radar, a little more uh, enhanced than this stuff did, where the uh, showers with the troughs swinging in toward Bristol Bay, scattered showers there around Kodiak Island, all tapering off this afternoon. And then uh, you can see the orientation in the gradient here south to north and uh, lines fairly close together so we're seeing uh, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds with gusts above 60 or 65 through Turnigan Arm today pretty bruising conditions across uh, the Kenai Peninsula this afternoon or early this or earlier this morning uh, Seward had light variable winds and then that trough came through south uh, gusts 35 miles an hour there were over 40 mile an hour gusts earlier today in Cordova uh, with the uh, rainfall amounts uh, actually heaviest here over the southeast coast with a net picking up uh, just under two inches of rain, 1.82 inches uh, to be exact. That's a 24 hour amount ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, Cordova, Seward and Kodiak all had about three quarters of an inch of rain. And then with the system out here, uh, Cold Bay picked up a third of an inch, some of that uh, falling as snow. 
And then that all ended uh, late this morning with uh, some good sunshine back across the eastern Aleutians. Rain and snow over the Pervilof Islands today and uh, nice conditions, Koyukuk Valley up to the Brooks Range and then some uh, fog and flurries there along the Arctic coast with uh, still continuing those gusty east winds, but they were lighter than what was seen yesterday. Snow and blowing snow here from the Bering Strait down across St. Lawrence Island. Uh, again, the winds gusting about 50 miles an hour there through the Bering Strait and uh, lighter winds, uh, still pretty brisk there, but not as uh, strong as they are through the Bering Strait there across St. Lawrence Island. And a nice day with uh, pretty light winds, I mentioned, for the eastern illusions. That extended all the way out to Shimia, actually. Just light, variable winds. In fact, uh, both Adak and Atka had calm winds this afternoon. And uh, just barely a breeze going on there at Nikolsky. For the forecast uh, tonight, uh, that upper disturbance, colder air aloft, comes in across southern Alaska. So that'll kick off some snow showers here across the area and uh, that could drop up to an inch of snow in some areas. Only the lucky areas though will see that and uh, some of that might get into the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, scattered rain and snow showers along the North Gulf Coast. Still a chance of some moisture for Kodiak Island. Scattered showers across the Southeast Coast with winds lightening up and uh, pretty light winds here along the North Gulf Coast as well. Diminishing winds, South Central Alaska back out to the west here and then uh, maybe some flurries there kind of enhancing along the southern slopes of the Brooks Range as that trough progresses northward. But uh, fair, no change really along the Arctic coast, areas of fog, maybe some flurries and uh, continued gusty winds along and off the coast. And uh, again, the winter weather advisory ends at 3 a.m. tonight here for the St. Lawrence Island area in the Bering Strait coast. And then with this trough, look for uh, snow showers here over the Yukon into the Kuskokwim Delta and that'll extend down but uh, begin to pull northwest of the Pervilofs there and then down but uh, maybe not quite reaching the Adak Atka area there with most of the moisture staying to the north. Gusty north winds, snow showers out towards Shimia. Next system coming northward here increasing the uh, wind and chance of moisture reaching the Alaska Peninsula late tonight and we'll see for tomorrow that uh, Moves uh, some good rain and snow into the eastern Aleutians, becoming all rain for the Alaska Peninsula. Strong gale force conditions, Kodiak Island into Bristol Bay, down across the Alaska Peninsula on out uh, to the Fox Islands here. With that, winds increasing here even over the Gulf of Alaska and along the North Gulf Coast. And still some snow showers, rain and snow showers, scattered along the North Gulf Coast areas. The shower activity will be decreasing across South Central Alaska. A dry day with some sunshine across the Tanana Valley, out, across, out westward there to the Norton Sound area. Then this trough will keep some mostly cloudy skies with areas of flurries or very light snow. Again, nothing significant accumulating up here with that from about the Brooks Range down into the Koyukuk Valley, maybe the upper Yukon areas, and that'll extend up across the eastern north slope to the Arctic coast. Otherwise, uh, not much of a change up there from what you saw today, but the winds along the coast and even offshore will be uh, continuing a downward trend for the next couple of days. Scattered showers for the south panhandle tomorrow, but the next system down here to the south spreading rain into the Queen Charlottes. And uh, this low center here will move up to uh, about this position on Tuesday. And that will spread rain from Dixon entrance into the southern panhandle, but areas to the north looking pretty good with some maybe partly to mostly sunny skies and light winds up over the northern areas. Drying out, uh, clearing skies, south central Alaska, mainly the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet. Still risk, risk of some snow showers over the Talkeetnas, maybe the Sintna Valley, up toward the Alaska Range area and uh, variably cloudy, risk of a few light snow showers there for the Copper River Basin. And there'll be a widely scattered rain or snow shower there, possibly hanging on or lingering over Prince William Sound. Nothing significant at all, definitely drier with a lot less wind on Tuesday and fair skies here over the interior. And then back into the mostly cloudy skies with some areas of light snow, possible flurries there up over the North Slope and the Brooks Range back out across uh, Kivalina into the the, the uh, southern Chuck CC area there and another trough in that southeasterly flow bringing some more shower conditions there maybe Kodiak Island but uh, definitely affecting the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians uh, a little bit better there but uh, losing the gales you can see a lot less of a gradient so lighter winds for Kodiak Island even the Alaska Peninsula and not all that bad here over the central Aleutians. 
Temperatures this afternoon across the southeast coast, uh, 40s about uh, sums it up there at 46 at Metlakatla and 41 at the same time there at Sitka, 41 also at Skagway, 43 in Juneau, 42 Yakutat, Cordova up to 39, about that same temperature recorded. A little cooler there at Valdez, lower to mid 40s here across uh, the Kenai Peninsula, south central Alaska, Talkeetna at 37, 37 also at Golcana. Healy up to 46 degrees this afternoon, 20 degrees off that over at Northway and Fairbanks up above freezing at 35, but Tannen on the mid 20s. Farther to the north, Bettles pushed up to the freeze mark and uh, Fort Yukon at 21. Otherwise, a cold spot uh, looks like Umiat this afternoon at minus four, minus three also at Point Lay, two above at Barrow, 10 above at Kaktovik with uh, seven degrees over at Point Hope and 10 there, uh, 15 actually, Kotzebue, 10 degrees in Deering, up to 28 at Nome, but uh, much cooler conditions, uh, the colder air up here coming down those northerly winds, so uh, single numbers there from Tin City down to S Savunga. Otherwise, 20s over the Yukon Delta, northern Cusquam Valley, 30s off to the south and southwest of that. We'll see uh, upper 30s there for the Perblofs, the eastern Aleutians, mid 30s here over the western and central Aleutians, upper 30s near 40, Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay. Kodiak State Airport came in with 43, as did Kenai. For the lows tonight, in the 30s there for the Panhandle. Upper 20s to lower 30s, South Central Alaska, North Gulf Coast area is much chillier in the Copper River Basin. Uh, staying mostly above zero here from uh, the Northway area up into the Upper Yukon Valley, but the North Slope Arctic Coast dropping a little below zero. 30s here for Bristol Bay, cooling into the 20s, but hanging into the lower 20s all the way up to the southern coast of the uh, Seward Peninsula here, and then cooler to the north, lower 30s for the Aleutians. Highs for tomorrow, again, much like today, 40s there for the Panhandle, uh, 30s to near 40 South Central Alaska, lower 40s Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay area, and then uh, pretty mild conditions all the way up into the Northwest Valleys there with upper 20s in the forecast for that area, and uh, right around to just above zero for the Arctic Coast and the North Slope. Flying weather, uh, VFR here across the Panhandle tomorrow. Uh, could be some spotty areas of marginal VFR over the southern inside channel areas, but those showers, uh, whatever's left, will be mostly of the VFR variety, and this associated with the next batch of moisture pushing northward. Otherwise, uh, good VFR here across southern Alaska, some spotty stuff up to the north. IFR bearing straight down into the northern Bering Sea, and then with that system coming up, look for a swath of IFR here, probably from southwest Kodiak Island, maybe as far west as Sand Point on the uh, southern side of the peninsula, marginal VFR to the eastern Aleutians. Passes shaping up like this, Anatovic marginal becoming IFR as that band of moisture slowly inches its way northward. But that again, I think will be just marginal escaping the IFR conditions. Lake Clark and Merrill VFR, possible marginal stuff on the uh, east entrances of both passes. And that same forecast good for rainy as well. Windy though, VFR, Isabel, Mintasta, all VFR for tomorrow. And for uh, Tanita, good VFR. And Portage, uh, IFR could become marginal in the afternoon. And, uh, but the lowest conditions look like it'll be in the morning hours and maybe a gradual improvement to marginal stuff again in the late afternoon. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR possibly becoming more VFR throughout the afternoon. And for freezing levels at the surface here across the Bering Sea, north of St. Paul, right into Cusquam Bay, angling something like this. Again, this is for late tonight, early tomorrow morning, say around 15Z, along the North Gulf Coast and across the northern Panhandle. Still have 2,000 feet here, covering much of uh, the southeast coast, uh, maybe as far north as Juneau. And for icing, again, the band of moisture heading up toward the Brooks Range there to a lesser extent over the upper Yukon Valley, but angling back down toward St. Lawrence Island. Uh, could be some areas of light trace amounts of rime, maybe mixed icing. Uh, could be light in some areas, but that'll be below 10,000 feet. And then that uh, next front coming up, so the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, uh, could see some light to isolated, very isolated, moderate rime icing there, mostly in that two to 11,000 foot range. And looking at the winds aloft, uh, big upper low here, south of the Alaska Peninsula area, 
Good jet coming around that. Splits again right in this area. Stronger portions going into the northwest coast and uh, pulling the uh, other portion back to the northwest here. And that wind flow is uh, going to hang on to at least uh, tomorrow and probably uh, into Tuesday as well. And for the 9,000 foot winds, uh, pretty strong here again with that next front coming up, uh, 45 to 50 knots, western Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, up to 70 knots here at 9,000 feet across the Alaska Peninsula, dropping back toward the eastern Aleutians, kind of a trough with lighter winds through here. And for the southeast coast, uh, not too bad, the stronger winds getting in close to the coast late tomorrow afternoon, pretty light winds over the interior. And east release 15 to 35 in the Arctic coast. Again, over the interior, light wind conditions, strongest here, western Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, especially the Alaska Peninsula. And then southeasterly winds uh, tending to increase, but stronger winds will remain to the west of the area. And for the uh, turbulence, uh, again, with that, most of the turbulence will stay along and off the coast with the heavier stuff, maybe just grazing. Prince of Wales Island, uh, but that'll only be maybe moderate, below about 7,000 feet. Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, and uh, southern uh, Kuskokwim Delta, on down to the eastern Aleutians, look pretty turbulent tomorrow with those strong east and northeast winds. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecast. The very first question that you need to ask when you're traveling in the backcountry is, is the terrain capable of producing an avalanche? Because if the answer is no, then you don't need to worry about any of the rest of the stuff. If you look at uh, all of uh, the avalanche accident data, it, it turns out that the slope angle on which a victim is most likely going to get caught on is 38 degrees, right in that level. Very seldom are people triggering avalanches on slopes less than 35 degrees and seldom does it seem like it's much more than 45 degrees. 38 is right there at the bullseye. One way to judge the steepness of a slope is to compare it with the steepness of a slope at a ski area. For instance, an intermediate slope is about 30 degrees, which is barely steep enough to avalanche. An expert or black diamond slope is about 35 degrees, where avalanches begin to occur much more frequently. Avalanche activity increases dramatically as the slope steepness rises above 35 degrees and reaches its maximum at 38 degrees. Only the very steepest slopes at a ski area, or double black diamond slopes, are 40 degrees. On slopes steeper than 45 or 50 degrees, the snow sloughs off so frequently that it doesn't tend to build up into dangerous slabs. For this reason, Avalanche danger actually decreases on slopes steeper than 45 or 50 degrees. But then again, only the very skilled extreme skiers can negotiate slopes of 45 degrees or steeper. In other words, 30 degrees is barely steep enough to slide, yet avalanche danger reaches a maximum at 38 degrees. This difference of only 8 degrees may not seem important to humans, but it makes a huge difference to the avalanches. For this reason, avalanche professionals quickly develop a very keen eye for judging those very important eight degrees. When in doubt, carry a relatively inexpensive compass with an inclinometer built into it, a simple device which measures the steepness of a slope. The next most important terrain factor is judging the effect of wind. Wind erodes snow from the upwind side of any obstacle, such as a ridge, and deposits that same snow on the downwind side. Wind can deposit snow 10 times more rapidly than snow falling on a sheltered slope, and it can quickly overload buried weak layers. Wind-loaded snow is often dense, stiff, and hollow sounding like a drum. Wind slabs can range from being very soft to so hard that you can hardly kick a boot into them. Wind can not only create dangerous wind slabs near ridges, but it commonly crossloads onto the sides of gullies or any other subtle variation in the terrain. Often the difference of only a foot or two can separate ecstasy from disaster. The bottom line, always avoid recent deposits of wind-drifted snow on slopes steep enough to slide. I went back and I looked at another report and I started coming up more and more mentioning this one area of slab that they've always seen go. 
And now I know it's the depositional area created by the cull. As the wind comes over the back of the cull, um, it loses a lot of speed and dumps the snow on the other side. Wind loading usually creates what looks like kind of a fat deposit of snow near the top of the slope. It's kind of a pillowed area. It looks like it's uh, kind of rounded, kind of a hardened appearance to the snow, kind of chalky appearance, real thick. What direction the slope faces with respect to sun is also very important. Because sun-exposed slopes are warmer than shaded ones, in dry snow conditions, the sun-exposed slopes tend to settle and stabilize more quickly after a storm. The colder temperatures on shaded slopes not only allow weak layers to persist longer, but weak layers of faceted snow commonly grow as well. Consequently, in a cold, dry climate, shaded slopes tend to be more persistently dangerous. Just the opposite scenario develops if the sunshine is strong enough to melt the snow surface. Then the sun-exposed slopes often develop hazardous wet slide conditions, while the shady slopes often remain colder and more stable. Another terrain factor is elevation. Spending time on the, the big peaks of the Alaska Range, another interesting factor is the fact that you've got such a huge elevation regime. An evaluation that you may have made up high on the mountains is not necessarily at all applicable to something lower down in the glacier, where you can get temperature differences um, of 10 to 20 below zero on the summit, and at 7,000 feet, you're sweltering in 65 degree heat. Trees or rocks which stick up through the snowpack are called anchors. If they're thick enough, they can effectively hold the snowpack in place. A thick forest of spruce trees, for instance, can prevent nearly any avalanche from starting. However, it can't keep avalanches from starting above the forest or prevent them from running through the forest. As a general rule, anchors are effective only if they are thick enough where you can barely ski through them. Otherwise, their only value is something to grab onto if the slope does slide. But if you can't grab a tree, then it suddenly becomes your worst enemy. But the danger is if you get caught in an avalanche in the forests, then all those anchors then end up being these giant baseball bats that just club you to death as you ride down through the forest. The final terrain consideration is, what are the consequences of a slide? Where are you going to go if, if a small slab knocks you off your feet? Are you going to go over a cliff? Are you going to go into a crevasse? Are you going to go into an ice fall or over an ice fall? And these are things that a lot of people don't think about. Another type of dangerous terrain trap is a narrow gully. Although it doesn't look very imposing, even a small slide triggered on the side of the gully will bury a victim very, very deeply in the bottom of the gully. And it's almost impossible to survive a burial deeper than six feet. Welcome back. Well, small craft advisories here along the coast. Uh, southeast winds 25 to 30 knots and of course seas above eight feet. And small craft advisories for Clarence Strait there for those uh, 25 knot winds. Southeast 15, Stevens Passage, light winds up in Lynn Canal. Those will pick up though to about 20 knots on Tuesday. Out of the north, extending down into the central inside waters and then Stevens, or uh, sorry, Clarence Strait, southeast 20, same thing for the south coast. And then the central and north coast, all easterly at 20 knots with uh, pretty similar seas. For the uh, North Gulf Coast tomorrow, small craft advisories, east winds increasing to 25 knots uh, with 12 foot seas. Northeast 20 for Prince William Sound, northeast 15 Northern Cook Inlet, small craft advisories, then gales, easterly gales here, minimum gales, Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, strong gales coming into the east side of Kodiak Island and even Shelikoff Strait up to 35 knots. Then for Tuesday, diminishing winds here, easterly 15 to 20 for the North Gulf Coast and uh, much lighter winds there, Kodiak Island, southeast 25, east 25 for uh, Kachemak Bay, lighter winds for Cook Inlet. And uh, strong gales here on the southern side of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, full gales there from Bristol Bay on down the coastline there, all out of the east, 40 to 45 knots tomorrow. And then for uh, Tuesday, small craft advisories, southeast here from Sitkanak down to Cape Sarachev and easterlies, 25 knots here on the northern peninsula on up into Bristol Bay. And for the Fox Islands, northeast, 30, 40 knots. Much lighter winds, again, like today, uh, 
uh, well, probably won't be calm like today. Go 10 to 15 knots for the central Aleutians. Northerlies at 30 there in a much tighter gradient out to the west. And then those drop off on Tuesday. Now we've got the 30 knot winds over the central Aleutians and east to northeast 30 knots for the eastern zones. And south of Nunavak Island tomorrow, east winds at uh, minimum gale force there with 10 foot seas. Small craft advisories for the Pribilofs, minimum gales there for St. Matthew Island and 30 knot winds for St. Lawrence Island. And then they all lighten up uh, down to 20 knots here for St. Lawrence Island, but uh, still a small craft advisory south of Nunavak Island and the Pribilofs, northeast 30 with 13 foot seas. Arctic coast, again, general continuing that downward trend in wind speeds here. Uh, along the coastline there, but still brisk wind advisories in a lot of the areas tomorrow, all out of the east. And then the outlook for Tuesday, pretty light winds here from uh, Wales up to Cape Beaufort, north 10 to 15 knots, east 15 on the west side, and then just 20 knot winds here, all out of the east on over to Demarcation Point. For tonight, again, uh, diminishing showers here for the southeast coast. Snow showers coming across southern Alaska, south central Alaska, again, could lay down an inch of snow in a few areas tapering off along the coast. The next system coming northward, uh, bringing again those strong gales, Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, even Bristol Bay, but the rain will be south here across the peninsula. Mixture of rain or snow from about uh, Falls Pass out to Nikolski, staying south of the Perbolofs, and then snow showers and gusty north winds out to the west, extending northeastward there into the uh, northwest interior and the Koyukuk Valley to the Brooks Range could see some uh, flurries, mostly cloudy skies, maybe some widely air scattered areas of light snow. And then that front comes across south central Alaska tomorrow night, dissipates over the uh, area again with just some scattered moisture back over to the southwest coast. Another trough brings more scattered showers across the uh, Alaska Peninsula out to the eastern Aleutians with lighter winds and the next storm pulling rain up into the uh, southern southeast coast uh, during the day on Tuesday. But the central and northern area is looking pretty good, and even the North Gulf Coast staying mostly dry. Well, that's a look at the weather. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.